Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sound of a Gap and this is Horizon Zero Dawn. Welcome back to a new episode and in this one we will meet Arendt and help him finding out what happened to his sister and in between we will collect some stuff and talk to Avat the Sun King. After some reading time we will clear a corrupted zone from two rock breakers in a kind cheesy way before finishing this episode by collecting some more stuff. And if you're new and want to help me reach 1000 subs, hit the subscribe button, it's for free and helps me out a lot. Alright guys, so please enjoy! It's Aaron, and he's in trouble. He's in trouble? Kill the machines? Wait, let me just save it quickly. Why is he standing on top of it? What the fuck? <laughs> so weird. I'm glad that's over with. <laughs> what are you help. doing? What the hell were you doing standing on top of that? What was it? A long leg, I want to say? All right, Come on yeah. Come over here and have a word. Good um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you in just a bit, but let me just loot first and foremost. And then uh, I will be right there. Hey, come on, what are you waiting for? Not waiting, looting. That's a difference, buddy. Hello. What are you doing out here all alone? Where are your men? I'm not going to risk their lives. I don't mind putting my worthless ass on the line, but not theirs. Sorry I had to drag you into it. Uh, That's fine. Worry. This is just an average day for me. You know, take down some machines, track some killers. Right. I'd hate to see a busy morning for you. Ready to get started? Tell me exactly what happened to Ursa. Start from the beginning. No one knows for sure. She left in the middle of the night with a few of her best men. Her best men? But she didn't bring you? No. I'd been drinking a lot. And maybe she thought... Uh, damn, I don't know. I couldn't hack it. Search parties found their bodies the next day and the corpses of some shadow carja cowards. It was an ambush. The shadow carja are animals. They, they beat her so bad, we can't even show her face before burial. I'm so sorry, Aaron. Sounds yeah. really awful. Well, when I find the soldiers who did this, they'll be sorry, too. Yeah. You don't have any idea why she left in the middle of the night? No. But it must have been urgent. A message, a report of some new Shadow Karja threat, I don't know. Why would the Shadow Karja do this? Because they hate us. And Ursa most of all. She teamed up with Avad to kick their asses out of Meridian. They've been licking their wounds for two years, but they finally found a way to get back at her. Are you sure you're all right? Well, I'm sober, so no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're thinking straight at least. Don't get used to it. All right. Show me where Ursa fell, and I'll do what I can to help. Come on, follow me. Let's go. Time for revenge. Why would Ursa come all the way out here? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Is this Shadow Karja territory? No. They broke the ceasefire as soon as they set foot in the cleft. Almost there. All right, this is it. Ah. The ambush happened. Our soldiers have been over it, but maybe that fancy artifact of yours can find a clue or something. Please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Footprints, clues, what the bastards that did this. Not the kind that would pull around a corpse. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. What else do we have? Arrows scattered there. Examine bloodstains and arrows. All right. They look like smears. Yeah. Someone, something was dragged then. They look good as new. Never fired. Okay. We're missing something else. These look like drag marks. Did someone move a body through here? What do you see there? This stain forms a line. As if blood dripped off the edge of something. Mm -hmm. Like a cart. See? Cart tracks. I think someone moved the bodies here, then scattered them across the field. And then? Wait. Are you saying the dead found here were killed somewhere else? But why would the Shadow Karja do that? At this point, 
I'm not taking it for granted that the Shadow Karja are responsible. Of yeah. course they were. Well, let's follow these tracks and find out. Ooh. Highlight. And on we go. This direction. But actually, those tracks are so deep, I wouldn't even need the focus to follow those. Get where they want to go dead. But why fake an ambush? <sighs> There's more to this. And we're going to figure it out. Okay, I can see something special over here. Maybe some ancient debris. Dimmed bones. Uh-huh. Yes, another ancient vessel. Yomai. Ah, yeah. Okay. Nice, nice. Anything... Uh, where, where are we? Ah, we're up here. Ah, there's a metal flower as well. Uh, for now, let's just finish this quest and then we could still explore and collect the rest. These guys aren't Shadow Karja. They're from my tribe, the Asaram. So... Is this how your people usually greet each other? She's coming for us! Dude, can you do something? Who else? Over there? Ooh, uh -oh. he was using ice. What's that? What's I think it's what? Calling in machines. What? Get what? Ready. Give me the crit, give me the crit. And another one. There you go. Shit. That's not a good hit. What are you doing? Hit. That's what I wanted. And done. All right. So why was he betrayed by his own Asaram, people? Not Shadow Karja. Looks like I was wrong about everything, as usual. And I was actually expecting it. Please. Use that second sight of yours. I have to know what really happened. I'm on it. Yeah. But first of all, I'm gonna loot, and then we're gonna investigate the ambush site. All right then, so what do we have? Those rocks, they're shattered. Weapons, rocks. What are those leather straps? So much blood. Okay, anything else? I think those are three and this is... Should be enough. Yeah. For now. So, let's investigate those. A lot of people died here. A massacre. Armor straps. Cut with a knife. And a rock with blood on it. Did she get stoned? To death. Something hit these stones. Something I've never seen before. These look like vanguard weapons. There's no blood on them. Ursus men didn't fight back. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Are we looking for more? That's not it? Really? 
Looks like you could mount some equipment on that thing. There, by the tripod. A used power cell. What? Talk to a used power cell? I don't see a power cell. Or do you mean this one? Hmm. All right, let's talk to Erend. This is Ursus helmet. I thought she died in the field below, but must have been here. All this trickery. For what? Feels like it's just a torch in the... I have a theory. But it takes a little imagination. Try so me. So far, your theories are better than other people's facts. All right. I think the Asaram ambushed Ursa and her men with a new weapon. They mounted it on that tripod up there. It fires waves of force, maybe sound. Looks like it cracked the stone there. I think it paralyzes people instead of killing them. It dropped the vanguard right there. No blood on their weapons. No fight. Hmm. Why paralyze them if you're only gonna move them and gut them? They were trying to hide something. Look here, a bloody rock. That they used to smash Ursa's face in. Or someone else's. These leather straps have been cut. As if they took the armor off someone. Uh, that, that can't be. Her body is, is lying in state in Meridian. I saw it. You said she was unrecognizable. <gasps> Maybe they switched another oh. body into her armor. Someone around the same size. And mutilated it enough. So it could have been anyone. Even Ursa. So she's behind everything. Go back if to this Meridian. is right. Take another look at that body. If it's really Ursa, of course I'm wrong. But if I'm right... Then, then my sister could be alive. I, I, I'm going. Meet me back there when you can. I have a feeling that Ursa's behind it all. She was faking her own death. That's what it sounds like to me. Hmm. The shadows are getting long. All right, new main quest into the Borderlands. Oh, we have two main quests then. Meet Aaron at the Palace of the Sun. And this is Maker's End. Palace of the Sun is all the way back there. Okay. Yeah, to be honest, I would like to finish this first before we go to Maker's End because this is far to the north. But before we go there, I'm going to take a look if I can find this metal flower. This should be somewhere either up here or down there. So one of each. Uh, not one of each. <laughs> one of them is right. <laughs> and the advantage is on the other side. It's on the other island i want to say we have to cross first so yeah let's get to that metal flower and then we're gonna go back and talk to Erend. all right the symbol is actually floating in the air but it looks like the metal flower is back there so we should be oh yeah there it is we are on the right track awesome let's take a look at that one's poem and which one is that there's a mark two i ah we're only missing mark twos ah, i forgot about that so just five more missing the moon's reflected on the river a few feet away. A lantern shines in the night near the third watch. On the sand, the grets sleep, peacefully curled together. Behind the boat, I hear the splash of jumping fish. Alright then, and with that, we're gonna go back here to the Palace of the Sun and talk to Erend. Okay, what's going on here, Morad? I think this is you, right? Yeah. Greetings, Aloy. I am known as Blameless Morad. Please come with me. You're needed for an important consultation. What do you mean? Where's Erend? He's inside, attending the Sun King, where we should be without further delay. Lead the way. Please. All of these people are here to see the Sun King. Yes, and each has come to ask a favor of him. Unpleasant, but that's politics. The Sun King is eager to meet you, the machine tamer with a curious eye for detail. It's all very intriguing. I'm not here to intrigue you. Too late. Did the Osaram get special treatment? Passed by some Outlander woman? Unacceptable. <laughs> they, they are actually not happy that we are skipping the line. <laughs> funny, funny. All right. Uh, yeah, let's just follow this guy. He's actually going very slowly. Ignore them. Nobles are like children who whine when they don't get a second helping of dessert. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is called entitlement. The, Sun King like? the most important thing is what he isn't like. His father. So he's I not mad. To be a reasonable man. 
Okay. Um. Oh, there he is. Aloy of the Nora. She who sees the unseen. Welcome. It would seem you have done me a great service. Erend, tell her what you found. I, I checked Ursa's tomb. You were right, Aloy. The body is missing a scar below her right knee. I gave it to Ursa when we were kids, fighting over a toy sword. If the body is not Ursa's, then we must assume she is still alive. And I will not abandon her. We only know she was taken, not who took her. I can help with that. Ursa has an enemy among the Oseron. A warlord named Durval. Impossible. Every clan in the claim has been hunting for him since the liberation. He has to be dead by now. No other Oseron had the motive and ingenuity to lure Ursa into this trap. I expect to find him lurking somewhere near the border. I've already sent an agent to investigate. He'll be waiting for word from us at the marketplace in Pitchcliffe. I can't move troops to the border without provoking the Oseram. But I could send a few vanguardsmen. And perhaps an exceptionally gifted Nora as well? Sure. Errant, Murad. Let me discuss it with her privately. I hate to impose further after all you've done, but this is a matter of great importance to me. Wait a second, hold up, hold up. Did you see that? Let's rewind this. Look at that. Doesn't that look like he's actually looking at the camera? He's, he's actually leaving his character, the guy who got the uh, motion capture and stuff, the, 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 the actor. And he, he's just, he just left the, cam the, the character and he's either looking at the camera or at the producer or something. It's a look like... Was it right? Are we continuing? Did I mess up my text or something? <laughs> or my lines? <laughs> this is actually quite funny. It sounds like Ursa means a lot to you. Without her Asaram vanguard, I would not have been able to liberate Meridian and end my father's brutal reign. Since then, it has been difficult to maintain peace between our tribes. But Ursa has a way of making her people see reason. So you see, I need her back at my side. And quickly. Who is Durval exactly? To understand Durval, you must first understand my father. He truly thought of himself as a sun god. His mind was broken. He believed that blood sacrifice would solve, well, everything. So he raided the other tribes for victims. Especially the Asaram. Durval fought back. He crafted powerful weapons and rallied his people. My father responded with the ultimate cruelty. He captured Durval's wife and daughter and sacrificed them in the Sun Ring. So, why would Durval go to so much trouble to kidnap Ursa? He felt she betrayed him. She fought by his side until she realized he planned to raise Meridian and butcher its people. Then she came to me. Together we stopped him and liberated the city from my father. Durval has spent every moment since trying to get revenge. Mostly on the other Asaram who fought with us. He made so many powerful enemies. I thought we'd seen the last of him. I was wrong. I'd like to ask you something about the Sundom and its politics. By all means. They call you a sun god who killed his own father in order to unite the tribes in harmony. Is any of it true? They say you can see the invisible, split an arrow at 50 paces, and tame machines at a glance. How much of that is true? It's not too far off. Well, <laughs> I would like to unite the tribes in harmony, but you saw how many courtiers I have to deal with first. Maybe next week. Quite a place you've got here. You can almost see the little people below the mesa. You don't approve? Well, I have a secret for you. Neither do I. But we must be patient. Change won't come in a single sunrise. But will it happen at all, while men live in palaces? It might. Eventually. If people like you help me bring it about. Your politics seem very complicated. The Asaram are friends, but enemies too? I couldn't have liberated Meridian without the help of Ursa and her Asaram freebooters. 
Many of them have settled here. But the Eldermen of the Osirum clans in the claim have become jealous of their success. So have many Karja nobles. It's a volatile situation, especially given the fact that my father raided the Osirum for years. Ursa helps keep the peace, promising a future based on mutual gain. But some, like Durval, will never let go of their venom. What can you tell me about the Shadow Karja? What do they have to do with Ursa? They are remnants of my father's regime, holding out at the fortress of Sunfall to the west. Like him, they care only for domination and seek to draw upon the power of the sun by spilling blood in its name. Since Ursa helped me take this city from them, they were perfect scapegoats. Durval knew this, of course, and planned it well. I need to get going. I know. Well, they say kings should never beg. But please, help me find Ursa. Who of says Of course. <laughs> well, Murad, for one. Don't hesitate to ask him or Erend if you have further questions. Alrighty, so now we have to go to Pitchcliff. Where is that? It sounds far away. Oh yeah, that's quite far away. I could actually I could just go there and collect the stuff on the way. Yeah, actually, let's do that. I wanna try and um finish a mission when I start it. Alright, let's make our way all the way up here. On the way, I'm gonna take this campfire. We're gonna clear the corrupted zone, get the metal flower and the Banuk figure before we go to Pitchcliff. So then, I shall see you at the Corrupted Zone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What do we see here? What is that? Founding of Meridian. Oh, this is uh, a longer text. So if you want to skip it, just skip ahead. And I'm just going to read it right now. So, the Founding of Meridian. We are Karja. In us is the blood of those led by Araman from persecution and pursuit so long ago. Out of the far savage east we came, guardians of a treasure greater than land or metal, the leaves of the old ones. Araman found the leaves in a ruin picked out by a beam of sunlight, and he recognized at once their importance. Within was etched the first teachings of how to observe the sun, to recognize its guidance and to understand the place of men. From out of the leaves came the first glyphs, the first writing, so... Our knowledge could last longer than voices. But when our forefathers offered to share this gift, they were driven out by those they had once called tribesfolk. These ones feared to have the light of knowledge brought to bear on their ignorance or were jealous of its power. And so began the long wandering of our people, trusting only that the sun would guide them and deliver them from the barbarian tribes. The path was hard and marked by the stones of families who fell along the wayside. Even Araman's own. The persecution was unceasing. From those without purpose, only the desire to debase and destroy. But the faith of the Kaja was rewarded with a distant vision, a tower like a solid ray of the sun holding on the horizon, flashing. Even as their enemies descended upon them, Araman followed the flight of the Glintorks, leading his people through looming canyons and teeming jungles. Again, they saw the tower, so close, now it seemed to reach to the very sun itself. And they saw that the Glintorks perched upon it. Beheld in the light of the sun, the tower, the spire, cast its long shadow upon a mesa across the verdant valley. Araman knew he had found a heaven for the tribe, as this was a place shunned by those without his faith, who cowered from the magnificence of the spire or the shining feathers of the Glintorks. He named this place Meridian from a passage in the leaves and the tribe settled in the protection of the Great Mesa. They found the site was blessed in every respect, carving their cliff houses from the bounteous resources and in time from the red rock of the Mesa itself, crowning it with the first columns of the City of the Sun. Truly, the Sun gave much to the descendants of our forefathers, granting Meridian great harvests and prosperity and the bounds of the sundom for as far as its light touched. In time, seeing Meridian shielded us from the dark arrows and plots of our foes, other foreigners brought trade and tribute. Holy Meridian! Without spire and sun, there would be no Meridian, but now and forevermore it stands as monument both. 
and the glory of Araman and the founders is reflected anew in each Sun King of the Radiant Line and the noble houses of the Sun Court. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, he said he can still talk to those two, so before we leave, let's just talk to Erend and uh, so, Marat. I thought Ursa was dead, and I thought Durval was dead. Dead doesn't seem to mean what it used to. Or maybe I'm just an ass. <laughs> Whatever. All I know is that it's time to find my sister and get some payback. I hope Marad's guy grabs us a lead. Did Ursa ever tell you anything about Durval? Well, we were both under his command for a while. Sort of. Helped him recruit an army to take out the mad Sun King. But then he got real creepy with Ursa. Needless to say, she wasn't interested, but he wouldn't let it go. Not to mention the fact that we realized he wanted to murder every Karja, not just the bad ones. Long story short, he's a grazer-licking dungbag. Avad seems committed to finding your sister. Yeah, those two got along. And some people say they shacked up, but I, I don't buy it. Seems a little skinny for her. <laughs> oh, okay, some bad images are forming in my head. Let's just focus on finding her and kicking Durval's ass. I'd better go. Don't stand me up in Pitchcliff, okay? Ursa needs us. Aloy, how can I be of service? It's obvious that you're an advisor to the Sun King, but what is it you do exactly? Whatever is needed, of course. Are you always so evasive? It depends. You were right about Avad. He seems genuine. He is the Sun King. I serve him the best I can. What else would you have me say? Huh. Did you serve the last one as best you could, too? Well, I served him to his enemies. It was the best I could do for the Sundom. What did you do? Nothing I could be blamed for. And this is why he's called Blameless Murat. <laughs> he's covering his tracks. He seems to be... Yeah, he seems to be a spy or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Sounds to me like you're a spy. There are many helpful voices in the Sundom and beyond. I like to think of myself as a good listener. So why do they call you Blameless Murad? Oh, well, it depends on who you mean by they, and what they might wish to blame me for. <sighs> Talking to you is tiring. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> I like this dude. He's funny. He's secretive and funny. What will I find at the border? An outpost full of Osaram, most of whom want nothing to do with Durval. Still, he inspires great loyalty in those who fought with him against the last Sun King. He will not be caught alone. And don't forget, he is a master craftsman. Nothing delights him more than his dangerous toys. Okay, so it looks like what well, sounds like we will have a big fight coming when we find Durval. What makes you so sure Durval did this to Ursa? I don't care for sure or certain. I prefer likely or probably. Really? How many Osram are clever enough for this ruse? Capable of building the weapon you described? Who hate Ursa so? More than one? Not likely. Durval? Quite probably. Even if people think he's dead. That is surely another reason to be suspicious of certain words. I have to go. Then you must. All right. Was I here before? I don't know. I want to say yes. I'm not quite sure. Let's take a look at this. Um. Uh, it looks like this one is new. The Sun Kings. The Chronicle of the Sun Kings, the founder Araman, who guided our forefathers from the shadows of the savage east into the fastness of the Mesa Valley, and who, reading the signs of sun and shadow both, delivered them to the sight of Holy Meridian. The bounteous Amavat, who's, who oversaw the clearing and sowing of the royal Mazelands, so that none who walked in the sun's favor should go hungry again who cut back the jewel to claim the rich estate lands for the first houses of the Sun Court. The far-seeing Sarahin, who expanded the Sun's dominion to the north, south and east, setting a gate at Bright Market Harbor, 
and who before the sun at its highest proclaimed these lands would be known as the Kaja Sundom. So by the light it was good. A generous... Oh god. Juvedan? Juvedan? I don't know. I wanna say Juvedan. Who stocked the metal markets with the spoils of his own trampler hunts and who allowed trade from north and south, even permitting outlanders the gift of the counting glyphs so they might understand more than simple barter. Zavarad, the pilgrim sun king, whose tower was raised to the top of the ridge of Wales and who crossed the great waters of the daybreak, so the sundom might extend ever further. And to honor this passage had the great blazon arc raised on the far shores. Bold Irif, who saw the sun's passing into the west as a challenge, and forged after it with a great army to be pushed back three times at the great canyonlands that would be known as the Dawned, until on the fourth time his cohort broke through and were vanished into the lands beyond. Prudent Basadit, who had the mantle of his fallen brother thrust upon him suddenly, who ordered the construction of the fortress of Sunfall and the garrison at Blazon Ark, declaring the land beyond in the Forbidden West where only the sun may go. I don't own Horizon Forbidden West yet. Uh, I don't have this game, but I will get it at some point. Kuvadin, the returner, who strove to bring civilization to the savage east, but returned after many strenuous endeavors, saying it was no longer fit for the people of the sun, and called for the building of great towers and walls, so this wild land might be observed safely. Renan, the firebird, who saw the Sundom suffer unprovoked attack by the Tanakh court, and who, against the protests of his advisors, accompanied his army to confront them. Under the sun he claimed victory, though he was so greatly scarred he wore his blazon helmet from that day. Nahazis, who was a hunter as much as a sun king, and called for the proudest men of the noble houses to prove themselves in competition beneath the sun, and that those who failed the greatest machines would be situated as the first sunhawk and hawks of the hunter's lodge. The illuminated Marzit, who the sun visited with visions so vivid and grand, commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visa visage. Visage? Visage? Sounds French, visage. But I want to say it's English, so visage. Okay, once again. He commissioned many statues and frescoes of his visage in Myriadian, and for his summer palace in Sunfall had the great citadel raised where he remained painting until he took deathly ill from his own pigments. Kivas, elder brother of Marzit, who decreed each family with a suitable male child should submit that child in service of the Sundoms, then depleted ranks, and had the artisans turn their attention from works of art to outfitting each soldier of the sun with the very finest armor, halberd, and bow. Jiran, who in his early years was a strong sun king, defending the Sundom from the encroachment of other tribes and the derangement of the machines but who became greatly adult and ordered the spilling of much blood in the sun's name, threatening to bring a twilight time upon us. Avat, the Liberator. He is still alive. <laughs> we just talked to him. Alrighty, I think we're done with reading right here. So let's make our way all the way to the north, to that corrupted zone, and the metal flower as well as the Banuk figure, and then to Pitchcliff. So let's get started. So, we are very close to that corrupted zone, but here are a lot of shell walkers. I don't like these whatsoever, so I hope I can enter this area without them seeing me. They actually get escorted by, uh, watchers, which is kind of funny. Yeah, we need to get on top of that. Guys, just keep moving, but I can go around you. Sawtooth are nearby as well, so it's quite dangerous, and uh, snap moss as well. Yeah, sure. Awesome. All right, let's enter this, this corrupted zone. All right, I need some place to hide first and foremost. Let's go here. Oh, I, I thought so. I heard something big. There's a rock breaker. Another rock breaker. Shit, there are two. And these are quite tough by, their, by themselves already. So, let's see how long this fight will take. I want to say quite long. The thing is, if I'm not mistaken, they are feeling vibrations, so I should be careful. Uh -oh. Oh, 
Come on! I hate these beasts, eh? I hate them. All of them. Alright, looks like if I stay close to the water, they can't attack me here. Oh, they still can. But just in a different way. <laughs> Holy hell. Wanna kill you first? The one was hurt. What? What just happened? All right. I really thought I could just uh, destroy his feet, so to say that he can't go down into the ground anymore. But it somehow is not working the way I wanted to. So the next goal I have is destroying this belly somehow. doing the fuck is going on can I hit him well in a way I can <laughs> is somehow he's is, is he stuck in the ground Come on, get out of there. Both of them are stuck. Oh, that looks funny. But I can't hit him. Jawoll! There we go! I think he's dead. Sorry to spoil your fun. Now I can see where he's going. This is great. Because he's burning. I could make his one explode as well. His belly. That might be great. And then I should be done. But yeah, this is taking way longer than uh, Redmore. Just because I hate those. And uh, Redmore was kind of easy. Come out of there. Come on.
dude that nearly hit me. Good, one more, one more 510 hit and then he's done. He just needs to get out. Come out, come out. There you are. And good night. What? Whew. I'm fairly certain this is way easier to be dealt with, but uh, done is done. So, as always, I'm gonna loot and then... Yeah, and then we're gonna make our way to this metal flower. So guys, see you there. There it is. And there's the painting. Well, a painting. Nice, nice. So, Mark II, of now, course. What are you doing out here? And that's F. Three more, to, four more to go. Saw a mountain. It's haughty peak. And bunched, spying, vying with the worlds on high. Deflecting every salvo of wind and shouldering the starlight from the sky. Brooding above the dunes like some great thinker. Considering days to come as nights go by, with black clouds wrapped about it for a turban, and banks of redhead lightning in its face, and through the night the tongueless mountain uttered marvelous things. Alrighty, so on we go. Actually, we're gonna cross the stream and try to find this Banuk figure. Ah, and we can see already it is very high up, and we have to climb at that side with the um, painting. That's what I thought before, because every time we climb something like that, we can find a Benuk figurine. So, let's go there. Let's find the place to um, climb. And then I will see you on the top. Um, I already made it. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't too hard. There was one glint hog, uh, which I killed. It's somewhere down there. I don't know. Yeah, it's just going up this way, actually. That was quite easy. So, uh, that one is Mother. Let's take a look. Ah, yeah. So, we're just missing one more from, from set three. And then we can give those back to the merchant. Awesome. Just one more missing. Let's take a look. We can see this already. Yeah, all the way over here on in the west. We're gonna go there at some point, sure. So, let's make our way to Pitchcliff. Cliff.